the government really shouldn't be running businesses that can be handled in the private sector. So the government has no business running a convention center for the same reason that it would be silly to allow the government to run grocery stores or to, or to uh, run video rental stores. That resources that can be handled in the private sector, their entrepreneurs have a tendency to keep costs down. They know what their customers want. In contrast, politicians, when they run an enterprise, even if they have the best of intentions, they're not competent. They're not experts in that field. They're political leaders. They're not business people. And so they really just can't be expected to run the business the same way. It's the, the problem of socialism, really, just in a, in a smaller scale, that you can't have political uh, rulers directing resources because they don't have the feedback of, of the market. And just on this point, I think it's very telling that Gaylor Opry Center, that they're not expanding at this time their convention facilities because they're in the private sector. It's their own money that's on the line, and they're thinking in this environment it's just not a good investment. So it doesn't reassure me when I hear that politicians are saying, oh, we think it is a good investment. We're going to go ahead and throw hundreds of millions of dollars into this, when really it's not their own money that's at stake. Some of what the people who are pushing this, what they're saying, one of their main arguments is that, look, this isn't affecting Nashville taxpayers because all of this money is being paid for by visitors from out of town through taxes on hotels and motels and ground transportation at the airport and so forth. So that, even if that's true, even if it's true that Nashville taxpayers per se aren't directly contributing to this, still that money is coming from somewhere and that's money that could be used for other purposes. So the, the cost estimates are varying, but the number I've seen lately is something like $635 million for the whole project. That's a lot of money, and if that's being raised by people paying taxes, for one thing, those taxes could be lowered, and so there would be more business in the motels and hotels for Nashville entrepreneurs, and so their business would be higher if those tax rates were lower. Or you could keep those taxes in place and use the money for something else, for schools, for getting more uh, doses of a vaccine, or whatever the problem is, that people, you know, there's plenty of things the government needs to spend money on and so to just say well this revenue is coming from visitors that by itself doesn't mean it's a good thing to spend it on Music City Center when already the private sector can handle that. The proponents of Music City Center are going to point to all the jobs they're going to be created. They're going to say look at all the people in construction, look at all the businesses they're going to be uh, seeing their bottom line increase because of all the new visitors coming into play. But this commits the fallacy of just focusing on what's called the seen and ignoring what the unseen effects are. So it's true, you have all these resources flowing into a certain sector, and yes, if the government wants to spend hundreds of millions of dollars building a, a, a big building and employing people, those people will have jobs. But what you're not seeing is what if the government, instead of spending hundreds of millions of dollars on this particular project, what if instead they lowered uh, taxes? I'm a, I'm a local business person in Nashville and my unemployment insurance premiums have gone up because of the recession. And so it certainly it makes me less willing to go out and hire people when my business taxes are going up. So that money right there that they're spending on the Music City Center, they could have spent it through lowering other businesses' taxes and employment would go up for that route. So again, it's an issue of do you want to have politicians directing resources and basically being central planners and saying this is where we think resources should go or should they return those resources to entrepreneurs and let them decide where the jobs really should be created? Uh, another common argument that people make is the yes, that the, the money is, has already been spent, and so it, that money would be, have been spent in vain if we didn't go ahead and finish this, but that money's gone either way. It's a sunk cost, and so what policymakers need to decide right now is given how much they think this project is going to cost going forward, how much more money are they going to have to pump into this, is it really going to make sense? And I would argue the answer is no, that just historically it's always the case that projects run at the government level, whether local or state or federal, they typically have huge cost overruns. They take longer to finish than the, the planners say in the beginning. And so the question is, that money is gone. You can't get it back either way. And so now going forward for how much more money we have to pump into it is a good idea, and I don't think it is. It's unfortunate if Metro has, has signed contracts, binding contracts with other uh, agencies or, or clients saying that yes, we're going to have these rooms available and they have contractual provisions saying we're going to pay you a penalty if uh, there's a delay or if the project doesn't go through. But that's not really an argument 
to go ahead and fund this thing. That's the fault of the people who signed those contracts before this project was approved. In a sense, if, if we allow this to go through and for that to be an argument, then that gives leverage and sets a precedent in the future that when somebody wants to sh sort of encourage a project to be approved, they can go ahead and set up these ramifications that would hit the government if it doesn't go ahead and, and approve a project that technically has not been approved yet. So again, it's unfortunate if, if the city ends up having to pay these penalties if the project doesn't get voted on. But again, that's, that's the problem of the people who signed those contracts before they knew that this thing was even approved.